All right, let's talk about atom economy and percentage yield. We're going to talk about atom economy first. Now, I really don't like the term atom economy. I think it confuses people. I always have to remind myself what it actually is. The way I like to think about it is like this. Efficiency of mass. So when we do a chemical reaction, we want a certain product out. But in most reactions, you're not going to have all of the reactants making the product. Let's take the reaction of zinc oxide and sulfuric acid. So these are all of our reactants going in, but the only thing that we really want from this is our zinc sulfate that's made. So this is our useful product. So we want to know mass-wise how much zinc sulfate is made compared to all of the reactants that go into the reaction. So the equation for atom economy is mass of useful product divided by mass of reactants and then we times it by 100 to turn it into a percentage. But what mass are we going to use? We don't have any proper masses here but it doesn't matter so long as we are consistent so therefore we can use relative masses and you'll always be given relative formula masses either in the question or in the periodic table don't forget that the mass number is the massive number so if you have oxygen 16 and 8 this is the relative atomic mass and that's what we use for this so zinc it turns out has a relative atomic mass of 65 sulfur is 32 Oxygen is one that you might want to try and remember. It's quite useful. That's 16, and then hydrogen is just one because it's just one proton, one electron. So let's figure out the relative formula mass of the reactants first. So first of all, we have 65 and 16. That's our zinc oxide. Then we have two lots of hydrogen, so plus two, plus a sulfur, 32, plus four lots of 16. So that gives us 179. The relative formula mass of all of the reactants going in, 179. What about the useful product? Well, that's going to be 65 plus 32 sulfur, and again, plus four lots of 16. It gives us 161. So therefore, our atom economy is going to be equal to 161 divided by 179 times 100, turning into a percentage, and it gives us 89.9%. Let's just round that up to 90%. So we can then use this atom economy with actual masses. So let's say that we have 10 grams of reactants overall that are balanced. We're only going to get 9 grams of zinc sulfate out. That's 90% of the total mass going in. Okay, so what about yield and percentage yield? Similar idea, but different enough that we really have to not get confused between the two. Yield is all about how much product is made in reality from a reaction. Now, when we write a chemical reaction, you might have assumed that you have your reactants going in and they all get reacted to make products, but that's not always the case. For different reasons, you probably won't get all of the reactants being used up to make the product. And that might be because there's a limiting reactant, so that means that one reactant is running out before the other, or chances are it's going to be because it's a reversible reaction. Perfect example of a reversible reaction is the harbour process. Now you may or may not know that where the equilibrium is shifted to the left or to the right is dependent on temperature and pressure. Let's say that we have 1000 grams a kilogram of nitrogen going in. So we can ask how much ammonia, that's NH3, is made from 1000 grams well, you know what? We can actually use atom economy for this as well, even though we've only got one reactant here, but it's still going to give us the right answer. So let's take a formula mass of nitrogen, and that is 14, 15, 16, 17, times by 2, so that's 34, that's 2 lots of NH3, divide it by just 2 lots of N over here, that's 28, times up by 100, and you might see that we're going to end up with a number that's greater than 100%, but that's okay. So that is 121%. And we can now apply that 121% to our 1,000 grams. So actually, this is going to end up being 1,210 grams of ammonia made. Okay, so we just figured out the maximum amount of ammonia that could be produced from 1,000 grams of nitrogen. But that's never going to happen because this is a reversible reaction. And even if it wasn't, you're probably not going to get all of that 1,210 grams coming out. Now that we've dealt with that, we don't need this 1,000 grams anymore. We figured out just how much we should get out. This is our theoretical maximum mass. 
So in an ideal world, that's how much would be produced. But let's say that it's not. And in fact, in reality, we only have 304 grams made. Theoretical value, real value. We want to know what the yield is. It's a percentage, just as per usual. And so it's gonna be the bit, that's this, divided by the lot of a theoretical value times 100. And that is a percentage yield of 25%. That's atom economy, which uses conservation of mass and percentage yield. Don't get confused between the two. Atom economy is all about how much stuff we get made compared to how much stuff goes in. But yield is only concerned with the product, how much stuff is actually being made compared to how much could theoretically be made in an ideal situation if all of the reactants reacted to make the product. So I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please leave a like. And if you have any comments or questions, then leave them down below. Click on the card to have a look at my other chemistry videos as well. And I'll see you next time.